Job chapter 23, beginning at the first verse. Then Job replied, Even today my complaint is bitter, his hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If only I knew where I might find him, if only I could go to his dwelling. I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would find out what he would answer me and consider what he would say. Would he oppose me with great power? No, he would not press charges against me. There, an upright man could present his case before him. I would be delivered forever from my judge. But if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Read to the end of the 10th verse. Gospel of John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 8. Philip said unto Jesus, Lord, show us the Father that will be, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing the work. Being to the end of the 10th verse. And we'll have another song before we look. Job chapter 23 and verse 3, he reads, Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. Wouldn't it be great if God would set up an office in this area and uh, arrange appointments for us to go and see him? Well, not really. <laughs> I don't think that would be a good idea. I don't know how long the line would be, but uh, I have a feeling <laughs> it would be a long one. But I might be way down the end where I usually am in lines. And I'm sure if there were several lines going in, I would pick the one that looked the shortest and it would end up to be the slowest. <laughs> so I don't think I would really like that idea too well. No, it's not really. But the idea might appeal to many. <laughs> many would say with Job, oh, that I might know where I might find him. And of course, the good news is that we can find him right where we are because he is here. I like that chorus. He is here, hallelujah. He is here, amen. You know, he is here. God is with us. That's the good news of the gospel. And we'll deal a little more with that as we go along. But first, let's look at Job's situation here. He needed to find God. He's going through a very difficult time, physically, emotionally, financially, just about every way. Great sorrow for losing his family in the disaster that we read about in the first chapter of the book. Very difficult time. And it seemed that in all this, God seemed far away. Although we know God is with us, that when we're going through difficult times, there is that tendency to cry out, Oh God, where are you? Why are you not looking after these things? Of course, God is working all the time, but sometimes it's a little hard to to realize that. And that was the case with Job. But he had confidence. That's a wonderful thing about Job. With all that he goes through, he hung on to his confidence in God. And we read in the 10th verse, which incidentally will be 
looking at more next week. The latter part of this chapter we'll look at next week. And, but the tenth verse, he said, but he knoweth the way that I take. He knoweth the way. God knows where we are. He knows what, we're situ what situation we're facing. He knows where we're going. And so he is able to meet the need. And Job had that confidence, although he would like to find a way of meeting God in a special way. Remember, this was back Old Testament times, not New Testament. It was a little different, different outlook. And he said, oh, that I might find him. But in spite of it, he said, he, he knows where I am. I'm just not sure where he is. That's the, that's the problem. Isn't that the problem of mankind? God knows where we are. God knows our needs. God is reaching out to help us. But sometimes we get so busy with our own things and facing the various difficulties and uh, our eyes get set on the difficulties instead of on the Lord. And we say, where is he? And he's there all the time. The gospel song about that is that he was there all the time. Oh, that's the great news. But Job hadn't experienced that yet. He was back in Old Testament days. And Eliphaz, is one of his so-called friends, had, had accused Job of sin and of uh, separation from God. Looking back at the previous chapter, that's why it's important to have your Bible there so you can look at the parts that I'm not reading. But uh, back in the previous chapter there in the, the fifth verse, he says, Is not thy wickedness great? and thine iniquity infinite. Now, well, isn't that encouraging words to hear from a friend? When Job was doing everything he could to serve God, faithful, and hear his, one of his great best friends, there was, we only know of three of them, but, well, Eliphaz came later too, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, but uh, uh, Eliphaz, who seemed to be the more outspoken of the friends, and all he could do is accuse God. And you look a little further, accuse Job then of forsaking God. And if you look a little further down there in the 13th verse, he says, uh, accusing Job again. How does God know? How can he judge through the dark cloud? Thick clouds are a cover to him that he sees not, and he walketh in the circuit of the heavens. He's away off in the heavens somewhere. That's why you can't find him, Job. Uh, you're not in touch with him. You're not right side with him. Sometimes people can accuse us those ways. He says, uh, uh, thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit of the heavens. Has thou marked the old ways which wicked men have trodden? Haven't you noticed, Job, how many wicked men have trodden? Don't you realize where you're going? Do you see what he's accusing him of? Uh, verse 17, which said unto God, destroy us, and what can the Almighty do for them? What can he do? That's the accusation he's given to Job, trying to break down his confidence and uh, discourage him. Oh, there's so many discouragers around. We need encouragers, don't we? I trust we're encouragers. I trust we can have a good word to, to say to encourage people along. It's so easy to complain. I think it's a pattern of Canadians to complain about the weather, you know. Well, if that's the only thing we can complain about, aren't we a blessed people? I mean, if the weather's the only problem we have, we are so much better off than most people of the world. But uh, I think some of it is just kind of idle talk. It's, uh, uh, Canadians don't seem to be great conversationalists. I mean, some are, but the majority of us probably aren't uh, the greatest conversationalists. And so you see somebody, what do you talk about? Well, you talk, well, isn't it warm today? Isn't it cold today? <laughs> you know? But, uh, and then of course there's a tendency to complain. But we have so much to praise God for, don't we? God is so good. Let us be encouragers. Let us try to say a word of encouragement to others that'll help them along the way. We all need that sometimes, some more so than others. But Job was lacking that 
and his, uh, his friends and the, the challenges that uh, uh, they were giving to him and uh, accusing him of being away from God when really he was seeking God and uh, c- continuing uh, Eliphaz's accusation there in the 21st verse. He says, Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come on to thee. You see, he's saying, Job, if you just get to know God and uh, uh, follow him, then you'll be at peace. He didn't realize that Job was following God far better than he and his companions were, but isn't that often the way? So easy to look at others' problems and say that, they must have done something wrong or some of those things, you know. Instead of encouraging them, lifting them up, giving them a boost in time of need. But Job knew his innocence. It's wonderful when we know that we're right with God and no matter what man might say, that we know that it's right with the Lord. It's a wonderful confidence. Oh, I trust you have that. I don't mean in a prideful way that says, well, I'm okay, it's the rest of the world that's wrong, you know. Like the story, the the soldiers marching down along in a parade, and this mother's son was one of them, and she looked up and said, look at that, everybody's out of step but my Johnny. (laughs) Well, (laughs) you know who was out of step that day? And it's easy to do that. But, oh, friends, let's, let's... be encouraged. Let us look at the reality and let us know where we stand in the proper sense. And Job did. Look at verses 6 and 7 of this 23rd chapter. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. He'll put strength in me. He'll give me deliverance. I have confidence in God, he said. He is my judge. Not Eliphaz. Not the rest of my so-called friends. Not the world about us. But God is our judge. Oh, I'm glad that I'm not a judge. And I'm glad that nobody's here to judge me. (laughs) We hope not. (laughs) Only God. We stand before God now and for eternity because he is a fair judge. He knows our hearts. And that's what Job was so confident in when he said, he knows my way. God knows my way. Man may not. Man may have false ideas. Man may give false accusations. But God knows my way. He we could change it and say, he knows my heart. Yes, I, I, I make mistakes. I miss the way sometimes, but, but God knows my heart. He knows my intentions right. I want to serve him with all my heart and soul and mind and strength. That's what Job was saying. I trust that that's what each one of us can say, that no matter what, our heart's right with God. He knows my way. Job knew his innocence. But how could he prove it? Well, sometimes you can't. And he wasn't. Not until God came in a miraculous way at the end of the book, of course, if you've read it to the end, you know. (laughs) You need to read the last page, see how it comes out, (laughs) and all these things. But God seemed far off. Look at the eighth and ninth verses as we read there. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but... I cannot perceive him. Oh, on the left hand, where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hides himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. That was the attitude, that was what he seemed to be expressing, but he was wrong, really, in that. (laughs) We can accuse God wrongly there. But he didn't know any better. He seemed to have looked for God and he couldn't seem to find him. Oh, much, how much better the psalmist uh, discovered than we, as we read in the 139th Psalm and uh, from uh, verse uh, 8 and, and following there. He says, If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. 
If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Wherever I look, he's saying, God is there. Oh, I trust that we have that attitude of the, the psalmist rather than what Job was expressing. Then wherever we look, God is there. Do we see him in nature about us? Do we see him in the people around about us? Do we see him in our homes? Do we see him in our church? Do we see God everywhere? For he is everywhere. He is the eternal God. He is the all-present God. And that was the good news that Job was looking for, seeking a closer relationship with God. Well, the good news is, because we're living in a later day, after the coming of Christ in the gospel age, that God has revealed himself. Job says, oh, that I might find him. But God revealed himself. One day, Jesus was born into this world. God the Son came into this world to show us what God is really like. We read from uh, John 14 and uh, the ninth verse, Jesus said to Philip, and to us, by the way, <laughs> have I not been so long with you, and hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me <coughs> has seen the Father. How sayest thou, show us the Father? That's what Job would say, was, show us the Father. Oh, that I might see him, God. And Jesus says, here I am. I've come into this world. I am God with you. Oh, that's the great news, isn't it? God is with us. Some have said that that was the last words of Wesley as uh, he was dying. Best of all, God is with us. And that's the news for us. And that's what Job was looking for. And Jesus says, here is the reality. I have come. Philip, you and the rest of the disciples have seen me in the flesh here. Now, we haven't seen him in the flesh. But because we have the Gospels, we have an uh, an illumination of what God is like. If you want to know what God is right, read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you have a Bible that has uh, red letters and for Jesus sayings, read them especially. What Jesus said, and he was here, but read other parts uh, too of the Gospels there of what he did. And we see what God is like. Because God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Jesus is, was, and always will be God. He is the same. Since man could not go to God, God came to man. Isn't that the grace of God? He always does it. And we're limited. God is unlimited. When we can't get to him... He comes to us. When we face situations that we don't know what on earth to do about them, God has the answer and reveals it on to us at the right time. Usually not as quickly as we want him to, but at the right time, God reveals the answer. He meets our needs. Look back at the first chapter of John's Gospel there. It starts off by saying, in the beginning was the word, and that word we feel meant Jesus himself as he came. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was God from the beginning. Jesus Christ who came to be the living word of God to us. And down in the 11th verse it says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. All that believe on him are made the sons of God. Because Jesus came. God is there. God is present. 
Philip had that same question that Job had. Oh, that I might find him. Oh, show us a father that we might know him. Jesus says, look to me. I am the father. He is the great I am. I am showing you what the father is like. Verse 9 indicates there. You've seen me. You've seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Jesus came to represent him. Jesus came to be God with us. And after he left physically, his presence came through the power of the Holy Spirit to be God with us today. 2,000 years later, God is still with us. He hasn't given up on this human race yet. You might wonder why, but <laughs> he hasn't. He's still with us. He's still pouring out his presence through the Holy Spirit. He's still seeking to draw us on himself. So we find God through Jesus Christ. Our situation is so much better than Job's. He was living way back there before the coming of Christ, before the cross, before the resurrection, before the ascension, before the Holy Spirit was poured out. All that before. Uh, can you imagine living without all those things? We yes, depend on God for so much. He's so real to us. We just can't imagine what it would be like without him. But that was the situation that Job had. He was living before all that. Before Jesus came to reveal himself and to reveal God to us. And so Job could cry out, where can I find him? Oh, that I might be able to go and find him. Go to the place where he is. See, he didn't have Jesus as a picture. We have that wonderful picture of God in Jesus Christ as we read in the Gospels. And as we experience him, as we go to him in prayer and feel that touch of Jesus. Don't always feel, but sometimes we do. Sometimes the Having you had that experience when it seemed that just God just seemed to draw so close that you almost felt like you could reach out and touch him. There's other times when you feel like Job did that he seemed to be a long way off, but and maybe our cry, the prayers go up and we don't seem to be adding the answer like uh, Shakespeare wrote in Hamlet, there my prayer of the king, my prayers go up, my thoughts remain below, and prayer without thoughts near to heaven go. And sometimes that's it. We're, we're so cluttered up by the thoughts and the ideas of this world and, uh, that our prayers don't get much beyond the ceiling. But, but God is hearing them. And it's when our thoughts go with our prayers that we get the real answers. God it wants to hear from us. I wonder how often he does. Reba McIntyre had a hit song a number of years ago about the telephone, you know, where the story in the song that, you know, hadn't heard from somebody and uh, why haven't I heard from you? There's a telephone, you know. And I, I think that was inspired by God. Because I think that's the way God says. We don't need a telephone, a cell phone or whatever. Uh, the wonderful thing about these cell phones, we realize that with the old telephone, you had to have the line connected, you know, but cell, cell phones, you can take them anywhere. And uh, still you're in touch with the, the person you, you want to be talking to. Because we realize now that there's sound waves out in the air there. They don't have to go through a wire. Uh, it's out there in the air. And that's the way it was God. We don't like, need a telephone line as such to go to him. Uh, we can speak and know that God hears us. God in the heavens because the, the sound goes forth. And we can communicate with our heavenly father. Aren't we living in a great age with all this technology that I don't understand? That can uh, uh, help us to understand the greatness of God. And the, the communication that we can have with him. And that he wants to communicate with us. Wherever we are, whenever it is, 
God is reaching out. It's like those sound waves are, are out in the, the air there for us to pick up on our contraptions that, that God is out there speaking to us, trying to reach out to us, and sometimes I think crawling out with Reba McIntyre's song, Why Haven't I Heard From You? Oh, I trust he hears from us. He wants to hear. He wants us to find him. He wants to be with us. Our situation is so much better. He didn't have Jesus as a picture, but we do. When we choose Jesus as our Savior and as set out on a, a, a new life with him, we find him. We find back in that first chapter of, uh, of John <coughs> when uh, John the Baptist, the other John, <laughs> John the Baptist uh, pointed out Jesus to his followers there. He said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And uh, they went to uh, follow him. And it says in verse 40, uh, 